Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I the Crafter. And today I've just turned the camera on because I've received some new products from PM Artist Studio that I desperately want to play with. And I thought, you know what, if it turns out successful and I share it with you, you're all going to ask me, did I do a video? So I'm going to turn the video on anyway. Right, let's get that out of the way. So before we start, let's tell you a little bit of a journey. Um, I'm slightly fascinated by how delicate watercolours can be, although I'm not a watercolourist. I have tried to do them in the past and with not huge amount of success, and I've been doing them for well over a year now, and I'm sort of only just getting to the point where I'm happy with some of the results. I watch lots of videos, I've read books, and just, for me, I just don't seem to get it, but I'm getting there. So I started out using watercolour pencils. Um, what are these? These Derwent? Derwent watercolour pencils. I still love my watercolour pencils. Oh, by the way, you may have noticed I've tried to zoom in a bit for this one because you see that's the height of a pencil. What I'm going to be doing is quite is quite close. So I, I thought we'd try something new. I'm not used to zooming my camera in. So we're trying something new. So I started out with these. Um, I like the results with these, but I wanted to try and be more true to watercolour. So I bought myself this. It was an inexpensive set on the internet, um, a palette of paints. I, I bought it ages ago. Not not overly pleased with the results. The colours weren't right and I use it occasionally, but only if I'm just doing generic stuff. I just, for some reason, it just, I don't know why, it's just not working. Probably because it wasn't a good quality one, but it's what I had at the time. I then bought myself a travel set, and as some of you saw, I found a travel set in a charity shop. So I've been using these, as you can see, I've been using these to play with. Um, I'm, I'm happy with these to a certain extent. I find that the colours are a little bit limiting. I don't have a lot of colour options. And yes, I know I could go ahead and mix my own colours, and I'm just being lazy. Um, that's kind of my my point of view, not someone else's point of view. So that's what I'm working with, and that's what I have been working with. As I said, not I'm going to leave them just there, so hopefully you can see part of them anyway. Um, so not overly satisfied, but I'm getting there. I'm I'm working with these, and it's challenging me. So what I do is, and this is just a little snippet, okay, I will do things like this, or this is how I started off. I do a watercolour background, then I'd stamp on it, and then I'd use these as like cards, I'd turn them into ATCs, I'd put them into other art pieces. I then played around, if anyone's going to ask, um, this is a journal I made in collaboration with Kylie Koo Studios in Scotland. In fact, I'll put the link to this video for this journal because it was a lovely collaboration. And I decided to turn this into, it's sort of not an art journal, but a journal of art. So things like, like these. These were some of my experiments, the ones I wanted to keep. That's actually acrylic. That's not watercolor. There you go. So I drew half a butterfly and painted it in and then stamped around the edges um, I thought I'd done another one of those. Oh, there you go. There's another one where I was working on more of a stained glass look. But what I was aiming for was like the delicacy that I've almost got in there. But I think I just put used too much paint. I can be a bit heavy handed. And then I played around with, with a feather idea that I'd seen someone do. And I really liked that. So as you can see, I'm playing. I'm working my way through and anything that's worth keeping actually goes into this journal. There are lots of other experimental little pieces. I very often will drop them into my own journals just just as a, a note to self that I'm doing something other than just wasting my time. So anyway, right, as you may have note, noted if you saw my haul from America, I found this in Michael's, I believe it was, watercolour pad, that's the weights because everyone's going to ask me. And I thought, well, as I've got this, I want to be experimenting more because it's quite a tome of paper, paper. So I thought, right, let's do that. Now, I'm only using basic brushes. That looks like a watercolour brush, but it just says number 16, so I don't know what it's going to. I'm off to the National Exhibition Centre for a big arts and crafts show in about two weeks' time. One of my aims is I'm going to buy myself some decent watercolour brushes because I think one of the things is you've got to have the right paper 
or so I'm discovering. You need to have reasonably good paper anyway, and also you need to have reasonably good brushes um, and reasonably good paint. So I'm trying to build up my stash of those. So yesterday I had my order from PM Artist Studios arrive. And these came with it. And these were some of the new foam stamps. Hope you can see them. Now these are designed by Michelle at the Creative Cove, which I subscribed to Michelle, and I've seen her using these. She carves her own stamps, and she's now in collaboration on the stamp designs with Pierre Marta Studio um, to make foam stamps from, and I was so excited because I loved what um, Michelle did with her original stamps and thought, right, can I replicate that? So, all I did, I'm going to do a quick one for you because I've already already stamped these yesterday so that I can actually use them today. Now, they don't need to sit overnight before I can use them because obviously I'm using archival ink. However, I just like to let them fully, fully set. So my method is I tend to take the ink pad and I dab it onto the foam stamp. Now, I'm not looking for a perfectly dark impression because I'm going to paint over the top and then possibly I might go in with a fine black marker and actually mark them up afterwards with lines and details. So I'm just going to press that down. I'm holding it for a second or two purely because in my mind this is watercolour paper and it needs to suck up the detail. See, love that, love that. And I like the fact that it's like that sketchy, hand-drawn nature. Well, it is hand-carved, so therefore that's what we're working with. This one was just so I could show you. What I've actually done is I've stamped all four out and I've put them onto these acrylic plates. I've just accumulated them over the time. I think this came with a set of stamps, to be honest. So please don't ask me where I get them from. If I look for plexiglass or acrylic sheets nowadays, I will go onto eBay or Amazon and I will put in plexiglass or acrylic sheets. I do know in some um, hardware stores in America, you can go in and they'll cut them for you or you can buy them because they're like replacement window panes. So I think this was a grasshopper. This was obviously some sort of beetle, might be a scarab beetle. This was a bumblebee. And this was some other type of beetle. I seem to think this is a really jewel coloured beetle. So anyway, I'll put them onto these acrylic plates because if I'm working on one, I might as well work on four of them and it means the others have got drying time. And I've stuck them down with low tack. So you can see I've written in there low tack. Um, low tack masking tape and it doesn't rip the edges of my paper. So I thought we'd just have some fun. Now, please, please, please be aware I am not a watercolorist. This is purely me just playing because that's what I like to do with this. I've got two glasses of water here, or two containers of water anyway. One is for cleaning my brush and one is to hopefully get clean water. Um, other than that, I've just got some kitchen paper or kitchen towel, whatever you call it, to hand just to dab my brush off. So I think we're going to start by what I would, I have heard called a dirty wash and the dirty wash is just basically putting some background on here so that it's not um well matra say it's not just the color of the paper so it's it's a very watered down solution hopefully you can see that i'm just using my plate uh the water to actually clean the plate uh, once i've got some on here i'm just going to come in and i'm not thinking about it being perfect because it doesn't need to be and I'm just coming in and later on once I've painted the beetle in it could well be that I come in and put splatters or dots or other bits of colour in there so I'm just going to come in on all of these now I'm going to use the green until the green is used up and then I'm probably going to tickle up one of these other colours and use that so exciting I was so pleased to hear that Michelle said yes to work with PM Artist Studio. Um, as you know, I'm one of their designers as well. And I was just I was so excited when Michelle said yes, because I love her work as well. And she's the one that I've basically been using as a font of knowledge, should we say, for 
me doing watercolours. So I'm just going to water this down. I'm going to make it quite a, a brownish sort of colour. This one can go on the grasshopper one, I think. Now, I don't know whether these are grasshoppers. Um, it looks like a grasshopper to me. Um, it could be, I don't know, I'm sure if you look at her channel, and there'll be a link in the description box to um, Michelle's channel. Am I still in shot? I am still in shot. I'm not used to the camera being this close, so for me it's a little bit tricky because it's a whole new world, as Disney would say. Right, there you go, there's that one done. And then let's see, this scarab beetle, let's clean the brush out a bit, pick up some of this pinky sort of colour. I think it might have been magenta at one point. Put some of that in there. Just as I said, just to take away the whiteness of the background, it could be that I add other colours in as we go along. And I'm just going to try and duplicate some of the techniques I've seen Michelle doing um, to see whether I've actually learned anything from watching someone else work. Which, oh, hair off my brush. Which hopefully I have to get rid of the hair. Right, so I'm looking for a very, very watery sort of effect. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean off that brush again. There you go. I'm going to bring them in bit by bit, and we're going to work on them bit by bit. Right, I want that green out of there. I don't want anything tainted colours I don't want it to be. I could obviously use another paint palette, but I've got this on here, so I'm just going to use it as I see it. Now, I'm used to painting things like butterflies and stuff like that, as you've seen. Not used to painting this sort of stuff. Am I in shot? I hope to goodness I am, or I'm wasting my time here. Right. Now, I seem to remember this beetle is quite a bright-coloured beetle. And funnily enough, I've got green there, and it's a bright green beetle. And I've got a feeling that... Um, Although it's bright green, it's metallic. Now, I don't have any metallic watercolours, so I can't do metallic watercolours, obviously. But I am going to try and work with this now. I don't know why I suddenly grabbed the brick brush. Probably because I've got big hands. It works for me. So I'm going to come in, as I said. Now, I don't know what I'm doing, guys. I'm just having a go. But I have seen that Michelle puts colour down, gets her brush clean, and then uses water to drag or encourage that colour to move up, up her piece. And once we've got, got the colour moving, I can come in possibly with a bit darker and actually add that down the bottom. And hopefully that means that it will flow upwards. And this could be where I go wrong because I tend to add more and more colour. And I'm not that patient, especially when it comes to this. I need to lift that off there because I've gone over the edge. It doesn't help also that I still have um, the out, outer edge is still wet. So I just want to tip it up. I don't know why I feel I need to tip it up, but it's giving me a nice effect. I also want to come in here. I want to put some yellow into this. Um, let's get some bright yellow. I just feel I want to drop some colour in even though I don't have a metallic, I think I can possibly do that and just lift some of it back out because I think once again, I put too much colour in there. Okay, now if there's one thing I have seen on numerous videos is paint it and let it be which I obviously really struggle with because I want to fiddle and fiddle and fiddle. I just want to get that edge off there. See, this is my problem. I haven't dried this, have I?
Right, I think I need to dry the background before I do the next bit. I just want to finish this one one off so it's drying and then I'm going to stop the video for a second, pull out my hairdryer and give all of them a quick blast with the hairdryer just so that I'm not going to be battling this all the way through the video. I do want to paint that bit in however. So I believe that's part of the head and I believe that's part of the head. Okay, so give me two seconds, guys. Just going to pause you, going to hit the hairdryer on these just so I'm not struggling with that. So lesson number one, make sure your background or the adjoining areas are dry when you paint watercolour next to watercolour. I should know that. I've seen this done umpteen times and I still get it wrong. Bear with me back in two. OK, all back again. I put the hairdryer on all of them. I've just used a little travel hairdryer, not a heat gun. Um, one thing I did note that I didn't know was going to happen. As I use a hairdryer, my low tack tape decides to peel up. So note to self, be careful about the heat gun. So learning curve today, isn't it? So right, so I've got the basis for this. I do want to come in. That's one thing I do know. Actually, it's changed for a smaller brush. That's one thing I do know about um, watercolours is that you can layer them up. Now, I wanted to put a bit of green onto this beetle's legs. And I think I'm going to use this, this deeper green. I keep wanting to be in shot, but I don't know whether I am in shot. There you go. So it's this more vibrant green. I just want to come in and touch this over the top of this beetle's legs. Purely because I can. And just put a little bit. Now his legs may end up black. I'm not sure. I don't have any reference photos. And I kind of did that on purpose, to be honest, because I didn't want it to be dictating what I did. I just wanted to have some fun. So I think we're going to put him to one side and work on something else now, because that's given me a good starting point. So let's have a look, a little look at our, what the heck is this thing called? It's a bumblebee. Right, I think I want to do the wings on this one next. So I think I'm going to pull in a little bit of, now, Wings are clear, we know that, but I think I want to pull in a little bit of blue. Um, I'm not sure what shade of blue, however. I just want them to have a little touch of dimension. Yeah, I'll be glad when I can buy a new brush because this one is shredding. Shredding? Shedding. So, and also I find some of these colours are not as pigmented as... I would really like them to be. Right, so I'm going to come in. And can you, I'm still in shot, I'm still in shot. I'm just going to come around the end of this wing. A bit in the way that I do with butterfly wings. And I'm going to put the same on this end. I find if I work two wings at the same time, I'm likely to get more symmetrical. Although it doesn't have to be symmetrical, but it helps. Right, so if I pull that colour in a bit with some water. Now I may come in in a little bit and actually dab some of this off if I think it's too much. Because I want, I want the wings to have some colour, but only because I don't want them to be white. But we all know that bee wings are clear. Well, are they clear? That's a question. I haven't actually researched that one. Right, so I'm just going to try and lift some of this paint away. Now, if it turns out that you guys like the watercolour journey I'm on, I may do watercolours a little more often with you guys. But I just, I absolutely cannot insist on saying I don't know what I'm doing. But I, I did share, I was in backgrounds, I think it was, yes, I was doing backgrounds in watercolour at some point, I think it was before I went on vacation, and someone said, well, Kerry, just because you're on the journey doesn't mean other people aren't on the same journey. And I thought, you know, that's a pretty valid point. So maybe we can learn together. But just, I would hate anyone to think I know what I'm doing. Actually, that's better. I wanted to have some colour. And by using something absorbent, 
I've been able to lift off the majority of the colour without destroying the wings. Yeah, see, it's just given me that hint of a colour. Right, as I've got that on the go, actually that's probably green. No, I won't jump around on that one. Right, let's pull in Grasshopper. <laughs> Sounds like a Chinese movie, doesn't it? Bring in Grasshopper! Um, okay, these wings here. Now, I, as I said, I am completely and utterly and totally using my imagination for this. So I'm assuming, quite wrongly probably, that the wings on the Grasshopper would be slightly, there's a hair coming out the end of there, slightly greenish in tone. So I'm just going to put a little bit of green on the ends of the wings. I'm so excited that Michelle's got these samples. I'm hoping Michelle, if you watch this, which I'm not, I don't even know whether Michelle follows my channel. But if you do, I'd love you to do more, please. Right now, I'm assuming these are part of the body, like the, the bit that covers the wings up. So I'm just going to pull in this colour into the rest of the wing. And I did like the effect I got by dabbing it off with a kitchen towel. See, that really, really lightens it back up again. Not that it was wrong to have it that colour to start with, but just tidying that bit up there. I don't want people saying Kerry can't even paint within the lines. How rude. I'm not used to working with paint that reactivates. So, right, I'm liking that. So that's that one. Don't anything else got wings? Yes. Our friend, I'm going to call this a scarab beetle because I don't know that it's not. Um, and I think I'm going to take, oh, I've got a purple in here. I thought, that, yes, there is a purple. As I said, we're dealing with fantasy fantasies here. So I'm going to add a little bit of purple to that blue. Wrong, wrong, wrong pot. And I'm going to make these wings have a slightly purplish tinge to them. I'm going to paint the whole wing because this is, this is very much looking like a wash colour. I may come in and add a little more purple to these. Now, I did go to my local museum the other day. As you know, I go to the museum probably about mm, once a month, once every six weeks, because I like the museum. We've got a really good museum here in Wales, well, here in Cardiff, and I do visit it. And I went to their insect department and I photographed, um, I photographed some insects and beetles purely because I would like to maybe draw some of my own. I've got that leaking over the edge there. Oh, that was a mistake, wasn't it, Griffiths? Stop doing that. Thank you. So, yeah, I have actually in the past looked into doing an evening class in watercolours. But the trouble is, I don't know whether you find this, whenever I've looked into the courses or the classes, um, the glass is sort of structured to paint like seascapes and landscapes and stuff like that. And and they don't seem to understand that actually I don't want to paint that. I want to paint something that's like botanicals or insects or butterflies. And they're like, oh, well, we don't do that. That's not what the glass is about. And I'm like, could someone possibly do a glass like that? And I never really get an answer. So I've decided just to try and teach myself from things I've seen and it, you can do it I mean good grief someone had to have been the first person to have discovered why do I keep doing that it's because I think it's acrylics that's why so I might go further and further off this screen am I let's just get that clean that edge up slightly oh, will you stop see what I mean I can't stop fiddling with it Right, I think that will do for that one. Let me get that a little bit off there, I'll be happy. Right, so we've got back to that. Right, I think we can go back to our original beetle now. 
and I think I want to add a little more into this. Now, this is very vibrant. I want it very vibrant, although I think I want to give it more of a, a yellowy sort of sap green color, more this color. That's another thing too, using these little palettes, I have no idea what these colors are actually called. I do know on some of them, because I bought one or two, these, I think these three, and that one I bought and added to this kit because you can drop them in because they're they're little they're little pans. I think they're called pans or half pans. And as you can see, some of them have actually got the colour written on the side like that sap green there. Um, and then I just clip them in. But and I did swatch them, but it's just I lose track as to which is which on my swatches. So all those lame excuses are exactly the ones I'm using. Right, I'm going to come around the edge and add a little bit of this green around the edge. See, I think I've overloaded my paintbrush again. I like the green for that, though. I think also I'm using too big of a brush. So I'm sure someone out there is going to be an expert on watercolour and they're going to inform me of all this. All positive, constructive feedback is welcome. If you're going to come on board and have a go, go at me, please remember, I said at the very beginning, this is me just turning the camera on when I'm playing. OK, I'm liking that. That's that's a little more the colour I was thinking of. Oops. See, big brush dropped it. I keep forgetting I've got two two pots of water. I should be using the two. And I could bring this in down to its shoulders to let it sit. Right now, these are not connected, but I'm just going to put a little bit of green in there just in case when I outline them at the end. Am I still in shot? I am in shot. When I outline them in the end, that maybe I'll I'll outline that bit because as I said I don't have the reference image actually I don't know whether Michelle actually I've got a feeling she might share the reference images on her videos when she does them I just I just decided to go rogue people okay I'm I'm liking that a bit more I quite like a little more yellow in the body though and I think by the yellow I'm I'm trying to almost create a shine now, I'm going to put some white in here. Now, I have been told by watercolour people that a true watercolourist doesn't use white and doesn't use black. And that's very admirable. But let's be honest about this. I'm going to use white and I'm going to use black because they are there. So just white, whiten that, lighten that up a little bit more with a little more white. So, yes, yeah, so... I have been told that you're not really supposed to use white or yellow, um, white or black. It didn't do what I wanted it to do at all. So I get another bit of paper and just lift that section off. Right. I think maybe I need to just do it in white alone. Mm, not getting what I want. But you can subtract it. I'm liking that. Maybe just going with the pure yellow as I did before is the right idea. I'm trying to give this a little bit of dimension. Trying to remember that if things are curved, they'd be darker at the edges than they are at the top. So around this area would be darker and around here would be lighter. I think I want to leave that one sit, let him dry. Now, as we've got yellow on the go, let's get Mr. Bumblebee in here, shall we? Now, as this isn't completely black, I do know I'm going to come in with a marker and I'm going to use water resistant permanent fine marker, probably a 0.8. I'll decide on that when I get there. And then I can put the black, really put the black in here. Now, I'm going to use up this little bit of yellow I've got here to start with. And I've splashed water on it and actually just put a generalized wash over here. And put a little bit of wash. Now, I seem to remember 
a bumblebee's head would be dark. So right, I've got that in place. Turn you up the other way, so hopefully it's not sending anyone ill because I'm moving things around. And if I put yellow at the bottom here, I've got a feeling it should be a different shade of yellow. Um, uh, just a touch of orange to this. And then clean my brush so I'm not adding paint. I'm dabbing quite a bit of this off now. I'm kind of getting the feel for this. And pull that up. And I'm going to put a little bit of the same colour up here just to try and create shade under the wings. Dab it off. So yeah, um, I did try learning stuff online, but I'm not a great one at learning online. Um, I struggle with that. I, I like to be in a class where I can ask questions, to be honest with you. Um, to me, I'm, I'm much more a learner by seeing someone do it in front of me, asking 101 questions and then going away and doing it on my own. So, OK, that's getting some dimension. I'm going to let that dry again so that I can come in and put some shading under the wings. Just remembering where things are shaded. Right, so we've got yellow on the go on the brush. So I've got my Mr. Grasshopper. Now, if I remember right, the grasshoppers that used to play in our yard when I was a kid in New Zealand were very much an orangey, um, an orange, very much a green colour. Um, looks like it's a yellowy sort of a green, so I think I'm going to play around with that idea. And make myself up a sort of yellowy green. I don't want that too too wet right let's do i think putting the base color on first worked for me with the b so i think i'm going to do the same thing here and i think his little head is green as well and i seem to remember his thorax i think this is a thorax Here's me trying to be all entomologist here. I've got a feeling that that was actually um, the same colour as the rest of his body. Oh, it's a he all of a sudden, apparently. Right, let's add a little bit on the edges of here. I also have seen that it's better to let the colours disperse on their own and dry naturally than actually to use a hairdryer on them, said he after using a hairdryer on it. I can't help it guys, I'm just making this up, I'm just not making it up, I'm just sharing what I seem to have heard and just trying to make it work for myself. Now I think the legs are not that colour, right. As I've got that colour there, I think I want to add just a little bit onto these wings because these wings, I love them. But now I've done the body, I think the wings are just not quite right. I can always add and lift. Let's come in and encourage that edge to not be a harsh edge. So I've gone quiet because I'm concentrating. I should have been concentrating when I painted that bit. So I'm just squeezing my brush to firstly dry it out, but secondly to make it a finer edge for me to pull into this gap. 
that's better I'm liking where that's going let's see if I can do the same over here and I haven't left it too long no I think I'm okay I think I should have not maybe that is there where well, it is now right and I think I just want to add a little more of that green to the little insect's head and I'm finding those wings look a bit too yellowy for me this is fun just playing and making it up as you go along and by making it up I mean the colour schemes obviously I think we're gonna let that one dry as well right we've done the bee we've done the, actually I need to do the body of the scarab now what do I know about a scarab I think it's sort of a bluey type body now this may not be a scarab beetle this may be an imaginary beetle I, I don't I don't know what the beetle actually is but I do think I want it to be blue maybe blue with a touch of purple in it mm, curious um, maybe that again Right, let's get the majority of the water off my brush. Now these wings are actually dry, so I'm okay to go in with this. Now I do have metallic acrylic paints that I could have used for this, but my whole thing was I wanted to stay just doing watercolours because my instinct is to go back to acrylics because obviously I have a better understanding of acrylics because I use them a lot. Okay, right. So I've got that in there. Just as a wash. I think I now want to go in with some deeper blue. I think that might be a deep blue. What colours? Oh, that's a very vibrant blue. That's not the blue I'm looking for. Um, let's go back to this one. Let's see if I can just add a little bit of blue in areas where the shading would be. So it would be kind of... around these areas, around that area. I think I want to make this little bit here, which I'm sure where the eyes are, darker. And then see if I can pull this up with water. Oh, it looks like I've got a lot of water on there. Am I in shot? I am in shot. It's a lot harder working with the camera zoomed in, I must admit, because I'm used to having the luxury of having my whole mat be, be the area I'm working on. But mm, not the case. Right, I'm going to let that one sit and we're going to go back to our original little friend. Well, I'm not overly upset by this. I'm upset that I've got a piece here that looks... It's a bit wayward. Let's do circular motions and see if I can just push that back a bit. Clean brush. Right, I think what I'm going to do, because that's not a million miles away from where I think it should be. Um, which I would like to add. I've got this thing about adding white. Uh, some people are probably screaming at me. Right, let's put the big brush down because there's no way I'm going to do detailing with with a huge brush like that. Right, I'm just going to come in with some little bits of white 
and see if I can almost add areas that might might be considered just shine. Again, trying to work the edges so that they blend out. Okay, I'm not, not disliking that. I seem to have lost the green. So I'm going to come back in with the green and add a little bit of darker green down the edges where I know that it will be rounded out. Actually, that's better. I don't mind that. Now, we're not going to spend hours doing this, guys. This was just me playing because I wanted to play with these new stamps because I'm excited about them. I'll probably come in now and do a little bit extra with the background. Okay, that's, that looks like it's, it's giving me what I want. I know that I've lost the, the starkness of the black and actually that's not an issue for me because that starkness is what I intend putting back in with, with the pen. And that was my intent all the way along. Now, obviously the thinner you make the paint or the more watered down you make the paint, the more transparent it becomes. Right, let's let him sit. Because as I said, again, I want to do a little bit more to the background of this. So I'll just lift that little bit off that I've just, in my attempt to clean up something, I made it worse. Right, I think he's he's going to be considered finished, but I'll do the background another time. Well, no, no, I'll do a background in a minute with you guys. Right, come in here, Mr. B. Right, Mr. B looks very, very yellow. Now, I seem to remember bees are not that yellow. They're more of an orangey sort of colour to them. More of a, a muted sort of feel, should I say. So I think I want to use what I know of colour and try and put some shading into this bee so that I can try and give it some dimension. My shot I am. So I know that, let's wipe some of that off. I know that under the wing here will be a bit darker. And around the edges. I also want all of this bit to be a bit darker up here. I'm still not getting what I want. Um, maybe if I add a little touch of black. That's a huge amount of black. Right, we need to start that mix again, don't we? I think I just wanted to dull it down. You've got to be careful with black though, because sometimes it comes across as green. I'm not sure that did anything. Right. I think what I've got to do is I've got to work, work this colour across the body of the beetle. It's not a beetle, is it, Griffiths? It's a bumblebee. Goodness knows I have enough of them in my garden on a regular basis. I should know what a bumblebee is. Actually, I'm not, I'm not disliking that. I wonder whether I do brave it and add some of this in for the shading. Actually, yeah, I don't mind that. Right, his little head, 
I'm sure his little head will be black. So I'm just going to black it out. I also think I want to come in and add a little bit of this black here because we all know that this is going to be black in the end anyway. And I quite like putting that in there. In fact, change of heart. Now, what did I just learn? I learned that don't put wet on wet, right? So I need to wait till I tickle those up a little bit. He's getting there. I think he's doing okay. I quite like that bit not to be that shade of blue. I'm liking the fact that you can go in and correct stuff. Right. Now I think coming in with my grasshopper, which I think is one of the ones I want to tweak, I'm going to come in with some yellow. I just want to add, there just seems to be a lack of dimension in this, of vibrancy or whatever you wish to call it. There's just, it's not quite singing to me yet. I think that's getting closer to it. I want to try and lift a little bit of that body out because it looks a bit dark. That's better. I think I want the back of its head a little bit darker. I just put a little bit of water in the middle and then dab that out. There you go, that's what I was hoping it gives me almost um, a highlight. Which if I remember right, um, Michelle may have done. I've got a feeling now I'm thinking back that she leaves a patch in the middle to represent the highlight. Okay, I wonder whether I can achieve that down here by putting a line of water down the middle. Okay, that's learning curve, right? So that was that one almost done. Right, I just want to go back to my beetle, the one that I was calling a scarab beetle. And I think I want to darken this blue, but I think I want to darken it down with some black and blue mixed together. Well, that's that color that's really vibrant, isn't it? Right. That's sort of a, it's a very, very, it's almost a Prussian. I'll come in and put some of that around here. Again, just put some water in to take, take the starkness of that edge out of there. Okay, that's kind of getting there. There's that piece again, so if I can take out the middle. Yeah, I can take out the middle. Now I will try and find um, on Michelle's channel at least one video of where Michelle was painting um, insects. And I'm, I'm almost certain, yeah, there must be one because I've seen it. So 
I will do my darndest to find it for you and I'll put it in the description box below. Please go over and have a look. She does such a good job compared to what I've been doing. But you know what? I said I was playing. Right, I'm going to pause the video for two seconds. These waters need changing because goodness knows they're not looking the right colour anymore. I want them clear. Um, I will get these dry with the hairdryer and then we'll look at making the backgrounds a little more interesting. And then I think we're possibly done. So bear with me for two seconds, guys. So reasonably dry. They're not fully dry, but they're reasonably dry. Um, all my waters are clean. Oh, I didn't pull in a new paper towel. There you go. Now, my aim now is I'm going to wet the background. Try not to touch the edges of the paint. And then what I, do, what I want to do now is drop in a few colours that will actually just disperse. Maybe put some speckles in there. I'd like to say I could do some splatters, but if I do that, I'd probably get them over the insect as well. I'm not sure I want to do that. So I'm just going to use my slightly bigger brush. Well, bigger brush. It is my big brush, one we're talking about. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to put water on the surface. As I said, I don't really want to touch the beetle itself. Now, if I look at it from an angle, I'll be able to see what's shining and what's not shining, which to me will help me because I'll then know where, where the water is. Now, this is another reason why I put the dirty wash on the first place, because if I hadn't have done that, what would I be doing? I'd be trying to go all the way up to the edges of things and I'd mess it up royally. So I've got water on there and I'm going to come in. I'm going to pick up some of the colours that are already in this. Um, let's pick up some of that. And I'm literally going to drop a few of these in. I don't, I don't remember how Michelle did this. But this is kind of... This is how my thinking goes anyway. Right, I've got that. I think I want to put some of the yellow in. Um, the brighter yellow, I think, will do. Now, what should happen, and it's happening with some of them, is the colour will disperse. And I think I might want sort of an earthy tone in here. What colour is that? Oh, that's way not an earthy tone. Is that a terracotta type colour? Terracotta would work for me. Just put little bits of it in here and there. Right, so I'm just going to let that do its thing, with the exception of this, which I think is just a little bit vibrant for me down in this corner. I think this needs a little bit more water to disperse it. It looks like this beetle's having some stomach issues, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Um, there's that yellow. So just maybe a few drops of it around here. Right, I'm going to put that to one side and we will revisit that. I don't like the two dots, so I want more than that. We'll revisit that in a moment. Right, um, let's do this one next because he is kind of the same color scheme well he's far from the same color scheme but you know what i mean so i'm just going to come and make sure my tape i have found that this low tack tape really likes to lift with um a hairdryer which is good to know should i ever need to get low tack tape off something where it's really sticky right again coming in with the water just so I've got distribution. I mean, something I could do with these, which I'm not going to, because I'm trying to stay with watercolor, is this would be a perfect opportunity to use powdered pigments like um, 
brusho or colour burst or something because I could sprinkle them on here and then they would disperse into different colours as well. So that's an idea for the future at least. But we're stay, trying to stay slightly pure here. Right. I like the idea of the brown that we used. So I think a few touches of the brown wouldn't go amiss. I really want to do black splatters on this. I'm just a bit nervous of getting it all over the insect and I'm not about to try and make a mask that would would be perfect for this because I'm just not going to do that. I do want to bring some of that colour out and we've already got some of it over here so let's use that. Now I expect a lot of this to dry, almost transparent. It looks a bit dotty to me. Let's take some of that out of there. That's better, right? Leave that to one side. Right, Mr. Bumbly Bum. Um, what do we call this in the end? A scarab beetle. Right, I think I want to come in. with some more of those purples, just to pull the purple out from its wings. And I think I've got a bit of the blue left. Yes, I have, I can see it there. I'll add a little bit of the blue to it as well. Right, let's clean that brush. Let's bring in some of that blue before I start. You know, I might take a chance and do a few splatters. A bit more draw an extra antennae on him. And I'm coming with the purple, which I believe is that colour. Well, thank you for your patience, guys, for being around while I'm doing this. I mean, I do enjoy experimenting with things like products and and new techniques uh, and I just don't I don't always turn the camera on but I I did take to heart what that person said and they said you should turn it on because there's always someone else who's on the same journey and I I get that I do get that and I just I need to remember it in the future but yeah you've got to be a bit brave when you're doing this sort of stuff for the first time I think I'll leave that one dry right what have I got left okay I've got Mr. Bumblebee. Now, Mr. Bumblebee is going to have, I mean, part of me, if this wasn't this watercolour project, I'd get a stencil involved and put flowers in the background of this. If I might have done them at the very beginning, but I didn't. Right, but what I think I do want to do is I want to come in and I like to add some orange to this, I think. Oh, I wasn't planning on that bit, but there you go. And I think we'll just cover in with that yellow. I seem to be migrating to yellow a lot today. Not what I would call a problem now. I like yellow. I'm going to have a leakage there, aren't I? I think the tape lifted and it went underneath it. Never mind. Worse things could be happening. Right, and that can sit and dry. Right, I'm going to need to now come in and I'm going to have to hit these with a the hairdryer again or we're never going to progress to the next stage. So here we are back again. 
almost dry. Well, as dry as I need it to be at this stage, because I have to dry them again in a moment anyway. Right, now what I've done is I've taken some of the black watercolour and I've made up a solution of black. And I've got myself a fan brush, which I'm going to do the splatters with. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mask off roughly um, the shapes of the pieces I've painted. Um, I do know there are products out there um, called, I think they're called liquid mask, which you paint on and then you peel off. I'm not going to the expense of that. Um, it's This is just an experiment. I think if I can at least put little bits over the areas that's fine i don't mind little splatters going with the legs and stuff are uh, i just rather not have it over the body itself so so i'm just doing that i'm going to pick this up with the paintbrush i'm just going to tap it on my finger like that then oh where's my tweezers I'm going to use a pair of tweezers to pick up the pieces and put them straight in the bin so I don't actually get my fingers in. See, that's what I was looking for, just a sort of a, an arty sort of splatter. Um, this one might be easier to cover because he's a bigger shape. So this is just called masking for anyone who's unfamiliar with these terms. It's just called masking. And basically, you're masking an area off to protect the area. So again, come in with some of this. Not everything needs to have a million smatters on it. Where's my other oh, there? there. But it does. I just like the splatters. And also I can see where this will be when I actually use the black markers on them, because the fine black markers will actually bring this even more through um the black black will show up even more all right mr beetle needs a covering now if i was being really really picky about this i could really have stamped another beetle fussy cut it around it and use that as the mask to protect my piece but you know what no i I wasn't that picky about it. I'm okay doing what I'm doing. Um, I, I'm not looking for something that's sellable. Do you know what I mean? This is just me having fun. And I've got little little beetle here. So right, what am I going to do next? Right, next I'm going to unfortunately stop stop the camera again. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to dry these thoroughly. I'm going to get them off their backing. And it will just be a case of just taking them off the backing, taking the tape off, clear the decks down, and then we'll come in. And I think what I'll do is I will use the black pen on one of them just so you can see what it looks like. Then I'm going to pause you and I'm going to finish them all. And then I'll come back to you to show you because I cannot imagine it's going to be interesting watching seeing me do several of them. So when it's the same technique and I'm only just playing. So here we go, guys. All dry. Um, what I'll do is when I've finished all these, I'll probably put them under a heavy book to stop them warping or to calm the warping down. I'm happy with these. Now, I know I've got another stage to do. I'm going to do this one, I think. Um, actually, no, I want to do this one because he's, he's the one we started with. So I'm going to do the black ink work on here with a pen. And then, as I said, I'm going to pause the video, do the rest of these, and then bring you back in and do a bit of a show and tell because it'll be exactly the same techniques for everything. Now, the, I've got a selection of Unipen Unipin pens, fine liners. It says water and fade proof on them. They come in different sizes, so I need to find out what size. What's this one? Yeah, this is Uniball. I want to say this is a permanent as well. It says it's ink and it's black and it's a 0.8. So I want to find something that's about the same line width. And I've got a feeling, let's start with a five. I've got a little bit of paper here just to have a little bit of a Actually, I think I'd go straight with that one, to be honest. That looks not bad. That's a 0 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now use, am I shot? I am. I'm going to use the, the stamped lines that Michelle Stamp created to actually help me put the detail in. Now, it doesn't bother me if it's not perfectly on the line. And it doesn't bother me if all of the lines aren't put in. I'm just trying to give it a bit more drama. Now, I'll deal with the side in a moment. But as you can see already, the drama of the black line, I double up that one down the middle and fill in that bit, I think, is really helping the colours pop. And I don't mind if my pen skips a little as well. And by skipping, I mean it misses patches. I've really enjoyed this. This has been fun. So as you can see, it's really, really bringing it to life now. now I'm going to come around the edge. Now, I know this edge isn't a perfect edge, so I'm going to sort of do almost a jaggedy line along the edge. This one is... I'm going to add a couple of lines in there, just to add some shading up to its shoulder. I'm sure there's a technical term for a shoulder on a beetle, but guess what? I don't know it. Right. So, this looks like it comes down a little bit on this. I mean, of course, you can go to town with markers on these. Now, I've done watercolours on these. Don't forget, you could do them in any medium you wished. I mean, these may look great using inks, but I'm not a huge ink person. I've got a feeling these little bits must be their eyes. But a beetle with weird eyes, OK. I put the eye in the wrong place. Well, no, I think that's OK. Now, the reason I wanted them fully dried is because if you've ever drawn over paint, you will know that you are always in danger of your pen not working the next time you use it. If the paint isn't fully dry, it can kind of build up on your pen. And, and pens are expensive. We don't want to ruin our pens. I'm working systematically down the body purely because that's the way my brain is wired, my social I am. Um, you don't have to do it that way. It just happens to be that I, I function better if I'm dealing with symmetry. Now, if you were someone who uses, um, what's that thing? A stamping platform, which is something you can put something down on and then stamp and stamp again. Um, don't think you can do that with a foam stamp because obviously a foam stamp is too thick and not transparent. So, yes, it's a good idea if you've got clear stamps to do that or red rubber stamps that have got a sticky mount on the back, but you're not going to be able to do that technique with this. Not as far as I know, anyway. I think that's okay. So, oh, so way too close to you. See, I think that's fabulous. I could come in with other stuff, obviously, but I like that. Actually, it's got a little bit more shading around there. A little bit in there. So, just have fun. Right, going to pause you. I'm going to do the others, all three of these, and then I'll bring you back in to show you the results. But I'm happy with that. OK, so back again and they're all all inked up now. I've just I basically I will say almost doodled with that pen and just created some lines thinking that if this was a beetle shell, it would be ridged. 
If this was um, a wing, it might have veins radiating from the center. This one, instead of actually curling the whole block of black, I remembered they'd be almost furry or fuzzy. And the beetle, again, if it's got a shell, it would be ridged. So I do want to take it one step further, though, because I thought, you know, I'm loving, loving, loving these, but I do want to just come in and do one little bit. It's just me. I have to play. So I pulled out a tech stamp. Um, don't ask me. It's a generic one. I just keep I keep stamps here with no no brand on them. So I'm also pulling archival shadow grey. I've pulled in here because what I want to do is I want to put some text into this just to add a little bit of interest. Now I'm trying not to go over the coloured areas, but I do want just something do you see what I mean just to add that little bit of interest because I love these so much I think I'm actually going to have I got that the right way up um I'm actually going to put these into my journal and keep them because this was a really pleasant thing to do I really enjoyed this and if I could stamp horizontally it'll be something but you know what on an angle works for me Right, let's see up again. I get confused with this stamp. It's all loop de loo and the loops confuse me as to whether, which direction they're going in. You don't need to do this step. This is just me being my arty little self. But see, I just think that just enhances them just fractionally. I'll hold them up properly in a minute once I've once I've finished this last one. Right, let's put that stamp away, stamp pad away. So let's take one last look at them and then I've got an idea. So, right, this this was our original one, the first one we did. That's the Beetle. And of course, there will be a link to all of the stamps in the description box below. So you can go through and buy them yourself or just take a look at them. There'll be links to anything the shell has got that is relevant as well. So that's that. This was the Beetle. I like this one. I'd like to have done this in metallics. Maybe I need to look into water watercolour metallics. I know they do them, I just don't own any. I quite like the grasshopper. I like that turned out well. And I love the bee, but then I like bumblebees anyway. We have loads of them in my garden in the summer. I think they all know where I live. So what I'm going to say is um, I encourage you to go across and have a look. Um, also watch um, Michelle's channel and see see them done for real, not, not by an amateur like me. Um, but what I would say is if you do happen to buy any, sorry, me, I have to line things up. If you do buy anything from PM Artist Studio, if you use this code at checkout, so that's KerryFan10, type it in as you see here, it will get you 10% off any order over $35. So if you're shipping internationally, that 10% off can really help with this stuff. So that's there. And I think what I think I'm going to do is I like doing this. I didn't mind the zoomed in. I've got used to it in the end. I think as my watercolour journal progresses, as I said, I went to my, my National Museum the other day and I did photograph lots of beetles and butterflies and moths. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw those up from, from the images I've taken and I'm going to leave them quite loose in their drawing in that I won't put a lot of detail in and I think the next time you see me do something like this I will then draw trace them onto stuff like this and then we'll do butterflies. I think that'll be a nice thing because I'm more comfortable doing butterflies. Um, this was a little bit of a challenge because I didn't know what the insects were to start with except for the bumblebee and what I'm assuming is a scarab beetle. So watch out for that in the future. I will try and do that. You never know if my sketches are good enough. I might even put them out there as like something you guys can download and use to do your own butterflies. So don't hold me to that, though, because I don't know that I'm going to be able to pull it off. So thank you very much for PM Artist Studio for 
getting those stamps sorted out. Thank you very much, Michelle, from The Creative Co. for sharing your artistry with the world. Um, thank you to you guys for being patient enough to watch me go through this whole process and learn as I go. Um, you never know, you might see a few watercolour projects from me in the future. I don't know at this moment. So, I'm Kerry the Crafter, and that's C-E-R-I the Crafter. Until next time, goodbye now.